Amen. Good morning, St. Andrews. And here we are back in worship again. And I'm just glad to worship with you. I need to worship with you. It's been a long week. And God has been so good to me. I don't know about you, but God has been better to me than I have been to myself. And maybe today we bring all of our troubles and heartaches, curiosities. We bring all of the shortcomings. We bring everything to God that we might be able to give God praise and glory today. How do we give God praise and glory? Give God praise and glory in spirit and in truth. But in this truth, we also testify of the goodness of the Lord. So we are not quiet <laughs> when we give God praise for all that God is doing. Just reach over to your name and say, neighbor, yeah. we have so many reasons yeah. to worship God. Yeah. Find another name and say, neighbor, yeah. I'm glad to see you yeah. and I'm glad to be seen. <laughs> Find one more neighbor and say, neighbor, it would be a shame for us to sit down on God this morning after God has been so good to us. Amen. Let's receive at this time our choir as we uh, go right into worship. Amen.
joy to the house of the Lord. Amen. For our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day and night, Lord, together in the house. I would rather be in the Lord, even in the house of my God, than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Cause of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. For those that have been in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is the holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words in my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth sing praise. This morning we shall sing uh, together as a musician begins to play. I have a message from the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. This message unto you I give. Or I give. It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It's only that you look and live. The songwriter says, look and live. My brothers, my sisters, all of you, look and live. Look to Jesus now and live. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It's only that you look and live. Now, in our uh, pews, our uh, uh, hymn books, Turn with us if you can to uh, page 215. Without further line, let's lift up our voices as a trumpet in Zion. Amen.
be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I love that song. What a good reminder. There was a songwriter that wrote another song similar that says, Only one look at Jesus. It will turn you away from sin. Amen. Amen. It's so good to see you, Sister Vivian, this morning. God bless you. Good to have you in worship this morning. Amen. I'll be glad to see each other's face. And Reverend Dr. Marshall Foster is with us this morning. God bless you. Just wait all. And you may remember Sister Marshall uh, was with us. Reverend Marshall Foster was with us when we did the doxology. I played. She did the, the benediction. Amen. She's back with us this morning. We're so grateful to have you and yours with us this morning. It's just good to see everybody. Uh, and we'll have a time in our service uh, going forward where we do acknowledge our guests. But at this moment, we want to look and live. One of the ways we can look to Jesus is to go to God in prayer. Uh, in our you know, denomination, we have what we call an invocation. It's a way to invite God to be with us. Do you need God this morning? I mean, don't, don't fool me now. Do you need God this morning? Are you just showing up because that's what you're supposed to do, right? No, but some of us have some situations, some circumstances. There are some things that we have been going through this week. But we need the Lord. Maybe there are some situations where your own money just won't stretch far enough. There are some circumstances where all of your intellect just isn't enough. Can I tell you, prayer changes things. Amen. And so I'm a witness. Uh, Sister Thompson, I'm a witness that, that when you pray, it may not necessarily change you, but it changes, or changes the situation, but it will change you. And so it just gets us in position. Let's reach out and trust the Lord this morning as God is passing by. I'm going to invite Reverend Janet Butler to lead us in this invocation. We ask the Lord to stop by here just for a little while. That when we leave this place, we will not be the same. Amen. Amen.
stand in body or in spirit as we um, read responsibly our scripture for this morning, which is coming from Luke chapter uh, 14, verse 1, and then also verse 7 through 14. Uh, if you don't have your Bibles, we do have these red Bibles in the pew, and we invite you to turn with us to page 1621. 1621. Amen. Thank you so much for your for helping to help others. Amen. Luke chapter 14, verse 1, and then also 7 through 14. Uh, rather than just reading it in uh, what we would call what I was teaching, round robin style, which is where the person who's a leader reads and then you read the second verse, let's read it all together. I'll be honest with you, it's only because I get tripped up where, where one starts. So, so if you'll just cut me today, let's all read it together. Verse 1 and then jump it all the way to verse 7, which means you're going to have to go ahead and get your finger ready to flip over. Y'all got it? Got it. Amen. And the Word of God reads this way, that on Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. Verse 7. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this man your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then Jesus said to the host, When you have your children here, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection. Word of God and people of God, thanks be unto God from all that dwell below the skies. From all the woods. Say to whatever you're going through this week, 
Whatever you're dealing with this week, we pray the very peace of God be with you. Just as God has forgiven us, Amen. we forgive each other. Amen. And so you have a an important role to play. Not to say, good to see you. I like what you're wearing today. But to say, the peace of God be with you. Let's greet each other for just a few seconds <laughs> in Jesus' name. Homework. 
before November the 11th that you don't bring you, but you bring to all of our church what God has given to your organization. You'll have a vision for what you think might, the missionaries, for example, might be doing this year. And then also, how much is it going to cost you to get it done? You know, in your own house, you got bills that come every month, yes? <laughs> and, 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 and sometimes you go, you know, we don't need this cable bill anymore, right? And my grandson told about something else called um, fire stick, and so I got to make a change. We may have to make some important adjustments as we go into this new annual conference year, and I don't want anybody to say, well, the pastor did all. No, no, no. We are all working as co-laborers to the gospel. So on November the 11th, I want to just emphasize Look for an email this week that shall come so that we can prepare. And on that, that day, November 11th, we'll have two things. What is it? This vision that God is giving your organization and some early things about what it's going to take to get it done by nature. It's where you say amen. <laughs> amen. So you will so just kind of keep that uh, in your, in your um, uh, uh, hearing and keep it in your, your prayers. Also, page six, if you just go to page six as well, you'll notice that on the very first Sunday of November, we are celebrating 173 years of the church. Wow! That's a long time that God's allowed this congregation to serve God and serve this community. And we have our very own bishop who is preaching that morning. Uh, and so our presiding elder will also be with us that morning. So it's going to be a wonderful time. Here's what y'all can do. You can go ahead and call, get on the telephone. And invite all your friends and that we can pack out the walker room. If y'all need a seat up here, I've got a couple of two seats you can take if you feel like it. But we're very excited about that. And so you can um, just make that, that calendar adjustment. And I'm not just that you can write that down in the calendar. Our thing this year, our bishop has talked about this season of, of uh, celebration and praise and thanksgiving. And so this year, we're also incorporating movement because we can certainly praise God that way. And so our theme will be lifting every voice, a symphony of praise. We're looking to praise God for what God has done, not only for 173 years, watch this y'all, but what God might be doing with us right now. Amen. You know, I, I thought about this where I think about what my great-great-grandmother and my great-grandmother and my grandmother, for example, Mary Lee Tapp, who was a member of the Manual Navy Church in Durham, North Carolina, she was a pillar of our church. She was a person who was a stewardess, and she baked her own communion bread to bring it to church as a labor of love. That's the kind of person she was. And I think about what grandmother did with no college education, come on, y'all, to, to, to fund the work of ministry in her church. And then I realized what my mom and my dad did. And guess what? That only makes me say, what can I do that the ball has fallen into my lap? This is where y'all say amen. Amen. Yeah. And so, so hopefully... We think about what we shall be doing for the next 173 years. I won't be here to see it, but at least all of us can say we did what we could do when, when God gave us the opportunity. So 173 years, St. Andrew's Turns has a birthday. We're excited to celebrate that as well. As well. So um, at this time, I think we have a couple things for our young people, and then we will take our tithes and offerings. Good morning, St. Andrews. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, on Tuesday, the 31st of October, at, from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., St. Andrews, uh, Little Chapel AME, and Murphy Manual will be presenting a Harvest Fest. So it's, it will be hosted here at the church for all of our young people. If you've got, you know, if you don't have kids of your own, if you've got nieces, nephews, please bring them on down. There's going to be a potluck, a meme costume contest, so it's, the competition's getting pretty fierce here, y'all. Um, but lots of games, trunk or treat. So um, if you please uh, see me in the locker room, um, uh, there's also going to be some other representatives to um, take your interest because we are looking for you know, donations, volunteers, et cetera. So please see us after service. Um, so that way, if you want to participate, you are more than welcome. We would love to have you. And then lastly, um, the Women's Missionary Society I uh, wanted to recognize that October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Um, we are going to be collecting new and gently used women and children's clothing, shoes, handbags, and accessories to donate to some of our partners in Sacramento County who are actively working to help women escape violent situations. Um, so the donations we will actually be collecting through November 5th, so that'll give you some time to rummage through your closets. I know I got some bags to give away, y'all, so please don't let me be by myself. 
Um, and again, uh, if you have any items to donate, please come and see me as well, and, and we'll get that taken care of and get it into the right hands. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, as well, Chris comes, um, we're steward of the day to make an appeal for our offering. Uh, guess what I did this week, Chris? What's that? I, in typical St. Andrew's fashion, went ahead and paid uh, through Giveify my $173 to contribute to the, don't clap yet, because, because, <laughs> because we're inviting, as a part of our church, uh, we also give our tithes and offerings, but one of the things we do that I've learned at this church is that we also donate uh, and where we can, but we're really an uh, extra $173 to go with uh, the church anniversary. I want you to know I was the first, hopefully the first uh, to do that. I'm inviting you as you think about this Sunday, next Sunday through the week, uh, for your family so that we might be able to um, to give into that way. And Chris, if you don't mind saying how we use those monies because we are also thinking about how we can earmark those funds to do work for our church. Oh yeah, that's fantastic, uh, Pastor. Um, we have been discussing uh, as part of the steward board um, the uh, building fund for the year. As you know, we all we, we have a lot of things we want to do in terms of our, our audio visual, our air conditioning, our plumbing and all. So we're, we're uh, planning to earmark the funds that are collected for the anniversary to contribute to that. And we'll be talking more about that um, at our official board meeting as well when we do our budgeting. So uh, it's now time for our uh, our tithes and offerings. Um, if you all bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for uh, this day, Lord. We, we thank you for the opportunity to come together and worship at St. Andrew's, Lord, and all of the blessings that you've uh, bestowed upon us and the opportunity that we have to give back, Lord. We pray that these gifts will be received today will be used to build up your kingdom. All these things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And, and Chris, before you we move on, I just realized you know what I missed, right? Uh, a way for us to acknowledge our guests who are here with us today. Uh, and so if you are worshiping with us for the very first time or even the second time, uh, do you mind just standing so we might just greet you in Jesus' joy? I see Sister Riley who is back again. Just wave your hand, Sister Riley, who visited us with us last uh, week. And it's always great to see you. Are there others who are here? Maybe you're coming for the first time. Maybe you're returning. We haven't seen you in a while. We want to just acknowledge who you are. And then our ushers are coming with a, um, with a um, um, microphone. So let's just take a pause. Because we want to just worship with you. But know who we're worshiping with. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to be here this morning. And see all the happy faces. And blessings. And this morning. My name is Jamie Bess. And I'm visiting the guest of God bless you. Yeah. Well, this lady is my junior high and high school friend from Berkeley, California. Amen. 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 Good to see friends. Amen. I want to strong guess the show no. Wait, you said that so fast, I don't know. I want to strong guess the show no. Amen. 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 My name is Marlon Mosley. I'm a guest of Charlie Little, and I'm glad to be here this morning. Amen. Uh, every year, I run down here to get baskets for Thanksgiving and Christmas. These, these are people that I get them for every year. And these are my nephew's grandparents. Amen. to acknowledge a young man who's sitting in the front who used to come here and um, he was a member here, did our maintenance whenever Victory was here, he'd be here. So Lamont, you better stand up. Anybody who's uh, had a, a recent birthday this week or last week, why don't you stand? Uh, I know we acknowledged people last week. Uh, would you stand? She stood last week, she stood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said she stood. Are there any birthdays this week? Amen. What about wedding anniversaries? Anybody got married this week? Anybody want to get married? 
Fui fazer nada. Se isso já não há. Já não há. Ok.
theological seminary, but it's um, interesting. Now, I knew I was saying it wrong when I said ITC in Atlanta. Uh, and so uh, she's just an important person. Yeah. Did you hear the sermon today, right? It's just something about sitting uh, and, and, and then being invited uh, yeah. not to think so highly. So she's so humble. Uh, but I want you to know who's in our midst today. This is a person you just went out here and said the name Marsha Foster. They would go, Ooh. right? So the Reverend Dr. Marsha Foster is with her. And I just want to give her just a space to say hello to St. Thomas.
Okay, you say amen. Amen. This morning, I want to preach from a peculiar topic, a peculiar title, uh, and that's how the fights suck. <laughs> when I read the passage from Luke's Gospel, I, it reminded me of a series of jokes that end with punchline, and that's how the fight started. You know these kinds of jokes all relate to some inappropriate, some tasteless, some foot-in-the-mouth comment by someone that led to an argument, maybe even a physical altercation. One such joke goes that once a year I decide to buy my mother-in-law a cemetery plot as a Christmas gift. <laughs> The next year, I didn't buy her a gift at all. When she asked me why, I replied, well, you still haven't used the gift I bought you last year. And that's how the fight started. And so when I read this passage in Luke's gospel, I would not be surprised nor find it strange if Luke, concluding the narrative, added the punchline, well, that's how the fight started. Because Jesus in this narrative proves to be a rather rude guest. I mean, he is invited to a dinner at the home of one of the Pharisees, one of the religious leaders, and proceeds to insult everyone, <laughs> including the host. And I'm just saying in Jesus' Jesus's defense that I don't think we should be surprised at the events. Uh, because Jesus apparently was invited to this dinner, and by now we should know, y'all, that when Jesus' presence comes in every situation where Jesus shows up, there tends to be a disruption. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have already confessed that this is not apparently the passage that I probably should have selected for today's sermon. Um, but, but, but I'm trying not to start a fight you know, this morning. <laughs> but it's also clear to me that our values come into conflict with the values of Jesus. And that's why, as I read in the text, I can see that there's a fight about to start. <laughs> like many churches, we are faced with financial challenges. We are faced with membership challenges. I, I believe every pastor I know wrestles with the burden of how to meet the financial obligations of their own church. I mean, every pastor I know is charged with and to some degree feels responsible for church attendance, feels responsible for church interests or the lack thereof. Most of us, clergy and laity, have heard repeated to us the maxim made famous by John Maxwell. Y'all know that everything rises and falls on leadership. So when offerings lapse, or when offerings decline, or when attendance lags, or when attendance at church dwindles, we are, or are we made to feel responsible for those situations, rightfully or wrong, wrongly, and we tend to do something about it. Yeah, yeah. The effort may often lead us to a stewardship campaign. Wow. I just have to put a pin there because, you know, we ended the annual conference your whole month talking about stewardship. Stewardship of what? Thinking, stewardship of time, of talent, of, of treasure. And we seem perpetually to try to answer the question or solve the problem how do we get more money? How do we get more people in the peace? Now, don't get me wrong, y'all. I'm not disparaging these kinds of effort, efforts because they seek to address an important question. In fact, uh, we ended, right, the annual conference year preaching about stewardship. And going forward, I am hoping that we will engage in conversations about how we can do better outreach. Outreach. Maybe also better in reach to each other. <laughs> That we might then bring more and new persons to the faith and to the relationship with Jesus Christ and Jesus' bride, which we call the church. Having said that, I also felt it was fair to warn us that if we invite Jesus to be a part of all of this, because you know sometimes you can do it without Jesus. <laughs> but if we invite Jesus to be a part of our conversation on this issue, 
As we try to respond to these concerns, Jesus' invitation and appearance in our midst, when Jesus shows up on the scene, it's very likely to end with a punchline to the joke. And that's how the fight started. There's going to be conflict, brothers and sisters, with, because we are almost naturally prone and perhaps understandably so to want to be around people with whom we share common interests. We also want or perhaps hope to surround ourselves with people who might help our situation or better our situation. While that practice or idea works for most of our social interactions, Jesus seems intentional on liberating us from our narrow and sometimes, quite frankly, uh, patronizing visions or versions of mission in his name. You can probably see here how the fight gets started because, ironically, uh, Jesus spent his whole life engaging with people that most of us spend our entire lives trying to go with. This is how the fight gets started because there is a question that this narrative in Luke 14 forces us to confront. What does our church work, y'all, say about us? Does what we do arguably in the name of Jesus reveal that we are more interested in perpetuating the institution or promoting the gospel? The point, or some might say that the joke or the punchline of the narrative or this parable is that it reveals how too often we have chosen to measure impact or to measure significance of church by membership alone. When we are guided by the question who or how many people attend our church? Or, or, or maybe how much money we raised? Or, or instead of mission, which leads us to ask, have we been faithful to the assignment that Jesus gave us? Can I just ask that question again? The real question we, we have to ask, right, y'all, is have we been faithful? to the assignment that Jesus gave us. Sadly, we have decided to, to gauge or model what defines success by social status, by, by, by popularity, by prestige, maybe even pedigree. And, and that's how the fight started. Because once a church and its leadership changes focus and shifts the center of attention and starts asking questions that point us to our mission, there's going to be a fight. Now, interestingly, in this passage, in this narrative, we should note that Jesus tells us how to solve the evangelism concern that most churches face. Do we really want more people in attendance on Sunday morning? Well, it turns out that we wouldn't have trouble at all <laughs> filling up this church or any church if we did what Jesus recommends to the host who invited him to the dinner. Now, I don't know if y'all know, but last week I preached kindness matters. This week I'm preaching about how we engage with folks. Next Sunday is Missionary Sunday, so I didn't call it a thing, but I'm just trying to get us kind of thinking of in a certain way. Hmm? Yeah, it turns out that we wouldn't have any trouble filling up the pews <laughs> if we did what Jesus recommends to the host in the dinner. You see that uh, in this passage today. You see right there in verse 12 and 13, he said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your rich wow. neighbors oh, yeah. Yeah. in case they might invite you in return and you would have uh, 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 you would be repaid. But when you get a banquet, invite the poor. Invite the crippled. Invite the lame and the blind. However, we may recognize that while solving one problem, Jesus may uh, intentionally, I don't know, cre create creates another problem. Because once we start filling up our church views with the poor and the crippled and the lame and the blind, someone is quite obviously going to ask for pastor. That's nice and well, and that's good, but, but where will we find the money to feed these needy people? We have a tight budget as it is. Who's going to foot the bill and pay for all of this? I'm just talking about another church down the street. <laughs> Can I be honest with y'all? Those are good questions. I want to acknowledge how you feel. Those, those are good questions, and it's likely that about this time the punchline might be added. And that's Pastor Howard. 
answer. Because the answer to these questions may be unsteadily. It, because having rudely dis discoursed, uh, 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 discourteously and impolitely insulted his host by telling him that his guest list was poorly planned. <laughs> because the host didn't invite those who should have been invited in the first place. Right. Jesus confronts us with a demand that shifts our focus and it reprioritizes our agenda. This demand can only be satisfied by those who are truly interested in the agenda of the kingdom of God. Because Jesus tells us to invite persons to our banquet. Can I call the banquet the church? Who cannot repay us. In other words, invite people who cannot help us pay our bills. Invite those who, who cannot help us take care of our responsibilities. To invite those uh, who cannot help us meet our conference claims <laughs> and our conference assessments. Invite us, invite those who, 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 who cannot help uh, our, our, our programs and our projects keep going. Okay. And when we hear Jesus say in verse 14, I'm just preaching the Bible. Right, right. And you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. <laughs> you know, I have learned, I believe that everyone, I mean everyone, has and operates and behaves with an agenda. Right. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and can I tell you, I'm not bothered because you got agendas. Come on. I mean, the steward's got an agenda, the trustee's got an agenda. Come on, y'all choir, we got an agenda. Come on, but I'm not, I'm not bothered by. Uh, by an agenda, I'm concerned with those. I'm, 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 I'm concerned with the question of whose agenda <laughs> informs our behavior. Yeah, yeah. This is the fact that makes this narrative so challenging. And challenging, and why we can say that's how the fight started. Because there is a kingdom requirement that lies at the heart of this narrative in Luke, and it focuses us on not our agenda, but a different agenda. Jesus asked someone, uh, uh, or asked something of us to be a part of his kingdom that will free us from our selfish and our self-serving moments. Don't y'all want to be free? Y'all yeah. carrying all this burden by yourself? <laughs> Remember that in verse number seven, the parable is introduced by how Jesus noticed how the guest chose the place of honor. Perhaps we will always struggle, we will always wrestle with knowing that the glory belongs not to us, but to God. But the truth be told, we also want some of the credit. Can we be honest? Some of y'all are sitting those pastor, you didn't, you didn't call my name. <laughs> pastor, you better take back it and so and so because you know they did this and they did it. Can we be honest? Sometimes we want some of the credit. The glory belongs to God, but we want some of the <laughs> What leads to the sharing of this parable is that Jesus notices how the invitation of special guests. Yeah. Well, we just left annual conference. We're going to be hosting the bishop of the God of the soul, right? We're going to have special parking places. Well, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but Jesus notices how the invitation of special guests and the desire for special seating. And the jockey that for positions and places of honor was rooted in a desire for recognition. And whenever we, and, and whenever we desire recognition for our accomplishments or our deeds, caution ought to be warned. Remember, it was pride that turned angels into, into devils. I have framed this sermon against the, the backdrop of backdrop of a joke, right? A joke that has the punchline and that's how the, the fight started. But, but there is a serious matter to consider this morning. Yeah. That we are about to engage in a fight for God. Uh, but it is arguably worth having this fight if we truly want to be disciples. Yeah. I know y'all thought I should put to be church members. <laughs> To be on the roll at St. Andrews. <laughs> no, 
No, but, 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 but the fight is worth it if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's how the fight started when we decide both individually and as a collective people of faith that we are going to resist every influence that is trying to pull us away from the demands of God. Mm. I promise you that when you hear the words of Jesus and take them seriously, can I just remind y'all that they ain't a joke? Uh, Jesus' words hold the power to transform you. Mm. I am uh, probably worried about how to present this message, this order, because I know some of us don't want somebody in this church. I mean, let's, be, let's be honest. I mean, I mean Pastor, it's nice for us to go out there and do something, but we don't want them coming here. <laughs> Can I remind y'all that, that this ain't the church? This, this is just a building. We are the church. We are the, 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 the body of Christ that, that has been broken and shed for, for everybody. Mm. Yeah, it, yeah I, I, I was worried about this, but, but as I tried to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to me about this, a calm came over me. Yeah, as I tried to understand what Jesus is saying this morning, and then I remembered and to hear the voice of the old preachers from my, my formative days in North Carolina who would say, who does God's work will get God's pay. Oh, I know y'all don't even know what to say to that. Whoever does God's work will get God's pay. You know, it's, it's nice to be recognized. Amen. But there is a recognition that comes from God that makes it all right. If you don't call my name, it's all right. Are there any witnesses in here that, 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 that whatever certificate you put my head up, it ain't even worth what God is about to do for me in my own life. Who does God's work will get God's pay. I think that, that what we have to do now is stop worrying about how we're going to afford to do ministry. Watch this, y'all. And just do ministry.
So to continue this conversation as we get ready for a church calendar planning meeting, as we get ready to engage in another year to do God's work, we've got to put it into proper perspective. Well, and, 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 and to me, we have to put this matter to what I call a faith test. Okay. Yeah. That faith test is just simply that we've got to trust God. Yeah. Pastor, why are you getting in my business this morning? Because some of us, like me, uh, because you rely on your own experience, because you're so used to making decisions on your job, you're so used to, 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 to figuring everything out. Right? I give you one egg and one little happy sauce and you'll make a whole buffet. Right? Y'all know how to do that. That, 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 that. Maybe with all the money you got in the bank, maybe with all the years that you have been on this earth, God is saying, can you just trust me? Yeah. Why are you trying to figure stuff out? I already worked it out. I already have the master plan. All I need for you to do is to stand flat foot and trust what I'm doing. Yeah. We got to trust God. Maybe there's some situation you're dealing with right now. God said, Yeah, you thought it was crazy that you're going through this thing. But God said, No, 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 baby. I'm trying to show you how to depend on me. Maybe there's something in your life this week you've got to go through. You've got to get to it. God said, Oh, and no, don't, you, don't you start worrying about this because I'm God. I'm God all by myself. And in fact, if I bring you to it, I'll take you through it. Come on, come on, just reach over to your neighbor and say, if God brings you to it, God will take you through it. Yeah. But you got to trust God. Mm, trust God. That, that means, watch this, y'all. We need to give God the freedom. We need to give God the freedom to move and to work in our lives. Yeah, some of us, some of us got God uh, uh, as a hostage. Because of our faith, because of our lack of faith, we, 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 we try to bind God up. You know, I appreciate the annual prophets, Jesus can't. Right? You remember that? Y'all remember that? Where, where it wasn't that Jesus did not come back to his hometown ready to work. But because they were so stubborn, because they had unbelief, Jesus could not do what Jesus wanted to do. Maybe some of us are in a situation where God said, I'm just ready to pour out blessings. I'm ready to change lives. But I need you to get out of the way and let me be God. Yeah. 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 Make room for God to move and to work. And that means we need to start expecting miracles. Yeah. 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 I'm looking for a miracle. I'm expecting the impossible. Yes. I, I can see the invisible. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The songwriter said the sky is the limit to what you can do. Oh, just, just, just believe it and receive it that God will perform it today. Uh oh, watch out. Today, today. Yeah. Well, church, yeah, yeah, yeah. How are we going to expect miracles again? How do you do that, Pastor? We're going to have to trust God. You see, I can't do this. You can't do this. At least not alone. By ourselves. But God can. Y'all yes. hear me? Yes. God can. The interesting thing is I know God can, but I pray that God will. Yes. I, I'm not questioning God's ability, because I know God can, but I say, God, I know you can, but I pray that you will. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. at this point, when I realized, as the songwriter said, as soon as I stop worrying, yeah. worrying how the story was going to end, I, I did what? I, I let go. <laughs> and I let God have God's way. Oh, y'all don't even know when to get excited. Come on, y'all. Anybody ever just find a let go to God? Not my will, but your will be done. Let go and let God have God's way. That's when the songwriter said, things start happening. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's when I stopped looking at, 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 at the way it was back then because I let go and I let God. Can y'all just move over out of 
find your own driver's seat and let God take the wheel? Just move on up and say, God, not my wheel, but, but your will be done. That's how the fight starts. <laughs> and you say, God, I'm going to trust you at your will. Yes. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Guests who have visited 
with us today. We know God brought you here intentionally, and we pray that whatever happens this week, that you will take the Lord with you. Amen. To all of our members, may God go with you as we leave this place. Amen. Praise God for whom all blessings flow.